Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max, the podcast. Check the guys out live weekday mornings from 6 to 10 Eastern on ESPN Radio. Aaron Rodgers had a press conference yesterday. We're going to get to that in a little bit. Draft is tonight. We haven't even mentioned that yet. The NFL draft, oh, the is, draft tonight. is tonight. So it's tonight. <laughs> what? What is the latest? That's coming up, KJ. Joe, I'm sure this draft week has been unlike any other that you ever really experienced. Um, can you just talk about what this week's been like for you, finalizing the trade, getting Aaron in the building, and then, you know, obviously on the cusp of the NFL draft? Yeah, m- a much different draft. Uh, kind of burning the candle at both ends, uh, trying to get this this deal done while preparing for the draft and um, being able to you know, get this deal done early in the week. Um, celebrate that, give it, give it the proper uh, oxygen it needs prior to leading into Thursday night. Um, very, very special moment for, for this franchise. Bringing in a first battle Hall of Famer uh, that has been a champion, a Super Bowl champion, and someone that's a, a recent two-time MVP, back-to-back MVP. It's certainly bringing that kind of clout and uh, performance into the building raises the bar for everybody. Um, but it also, uh, and you touched on it, we, we do have a young team. We have, we, have a, we have a good group of young players that are, that are nucleus, and then we have a, a really uh, interesting group of veterans. And so him being able to come in, uh, connect with everybody, um, and then them being able to, some of these young guys, to see how he operates day to day, hour to hour, meeting to meeting, um, just being able to, to observe him and see all the little things that have made him the player that that he is, uh, it, it's 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 huge for our team. Every draft is a little different, right? And I think our preparation and our process has to be consistent. And so, no matter where we're picking, if you're picking four, if you're picking ten, if you're picking fifteen, if you're picking thirty-two. Um, you, you always have to have um, that many players that you're excited about taking with that pick. So that if your board gets picked clean, you know you've got you feel comfortable with with taking that player. So you got to find find the right amount of players. And we need we need 15 players that we're excited about, and we feel good about the 15 players that we have going into the draft. And uh, look, you can't control what happens. I feel like last year. Uh, a lot of things fell our way, so you never know what what's what's going to happen. You know when the when things get rolling on draft weekend, but uh, we're prepared. We feel good about it going in. I think you saw it in last year's Super Bowl, right, with uh, Philadelphia and Kansas City, um, two teams that have committed a lot to the uh, to the trenches, uh, offense and defensive line. Um, obviously, Philadelphia's O line strong, their D line strong. Kansas City is a strong interior, strong uh, front, and so you see you see the the dividends of that paying off. Um, and so you know, we we attack it the same way. We're trying to attack it the same way, and um, and, and try to make this a bully up front. It's a singular purpose. Um, I feel like we all get into this business for the same reason, and that's to that's to win that championship, to hoist the Lombardi. And feel that confetti fall. There's no, there's no feeling like it. And um, you know, I keep, I keep a, a picture frame of the confetti from, uh, from one of the Super Bowls I was able to go to. And you, you, you walk in, you see it, and it just gives you, it gives you that purpose of like this is, this is what we're here to do. We're all here to win a championship. We're all here to do something really special, um, and to get, you know, an entire organization going in the same direction and accomplishing great things. And um, that's the singular goal of everyone here. There is no doubt about it. The Jets crushed the 2022 draft. What is the dream scenario 
At four and 10, the Jets plan to stay there and go best player available. That's the best plan for them with so many needs. Worst case scenario for the Jets, it is not getting a wide receiver or a cornerback in the top 10. Time to get the show started. You ready? The 2022 NFL Draft is now officially open. Well, I think going into the draft, we were really hoping to make a splash. Congratulations, brother. G John, what's up, man? Joe Douglas, how you doing? There's only one or two classes that have ever had the offensive and defensive rookies of the year come from the same team. I mean, that's just wild. Nothing really had to be said. We just looking at each other like, yeah, we did that. And I love the fact that Joe was aggressive, trading back into the first round to get Jermaine Johnson. He said, come get me. Guess what we're doing? We're coming to get you. Go back to Brees Hall. I mean, he might have been the offensive rookie of the year if he had played the full season. Brees! What up, man? I mean, we only saw what they did as rookies, so imagine where they're going. Joe Douglas knows talent. Just give the guy a chance to build the full, complete roster and give Robert Sala a chance to really work with guys and get them to understand the vision here and what they're being built. So obviously, Joe and, and Robert have a, a strong relationship, even though they come from two different backgrounds, so to speak, but they've merged their philosophies. He's awesome. I have a lot of respect uh, for those two guys. You know, Coach Salah came in with a purpose. He came in with a, a direction that he, he wanted to go and wanted to build his program. And I think Joe D, uh, in his philosophy and trying to build a team, build a culture, they've done an outstanding job of uh, creating this type of atmosphere where we're uh, poised to, uh, to make a run. I believe in the direction uh, of Joe Douglas. Obviously, he's drafted really well the last couple of years, having an uh, offensive and defensive rookie of the year. Joe Douglas has taken a real good approach, a real patient approach here. You know, he was asked at his pre-draft press conference this year, how do you follow up last year's draft? Well, you, you draft again, right? That's kind of how it works. There's one every year. You, you, you take advantage, if you're Joe Douglas, in 2023 of the highest draft picks that you're hoping to have for the next couple of years and say, hey, it may not be last year's draft class, at least in the first round, but we're going to be able to hit and capitalize on what we've got right now. Last year's draft was a, was a real credit to our scouting staff, our coaching staff, but last year's draft is last year. And so um, our focus is, is moving forward. And uh, you know, we, um, you know, we, we appreciate everything that happened last year, but we know that, that we have a big challenge coming up in a few days. And uh, you know, we need to keep adding the right type of people and character uh, to this team. Uh, to follow, to follow up on that, just the offensive line. Before the lights shine bright on draft night, the Jets' front office spends hours and hours in the shadows, evaluating hundreds of players to determine who should play for the green and white. It's okay, Joy, you can't wait. Go ahead. All right, let's roll. Let's roll. All right, we'll get going on the offensive line. Uh, first, just want to thank all you guys for all your, your, your effort, the, the miles of these pro days, the, the individual workouts, everything. Uh, you know, scouts are on the road sometimes 150 to 200 plus nights a year and they, they go to great lengths in terms of communicating with, with coaches, with support staff. It is a process of elimination. Uh, it's very uh, tedious, but as you really try to figure out who are the best fits for this particular team and this philosophy, in, in a lot of cases it becomes quite clear. My Jets guy, I like the tape. I like how he plays the game. Good instinct, shows feel for finding space, also brings elusiveness after the catch. He's not a leader, doesn't want to be one, uh, doesn't see the weight room or nutrition is very important. Uh, he is improving, um, but there's still room to grow there. That being said, he's got great practice habits, cares about football, um, he's very football smart. They're attractive to me anyway because they, they run, they communicate, and they die. He loves to play football on the field on game day. Nothing about the process for him is enjoyable. The only thing holding this dude back from going to the Hall of Fame is himself. That's it. 
So when we come into the meetings, each one of the, the coach and then the scout will have an opportunity to do their own rankings within the position. And then the, we'll just have a communication back and forth like you're talking about. Start off with, uh, we're gonna work off with Coach Carter's list. Uh, then the position cross check scout and the coordinator. You know, there's a lot of experience in those in those meeting rooms, and there's a lot of communication, a lot of honest communication, and there's some disagreements, but it's healthy disagreement. I knew this one was going to be controversial. That's fine. That's why I'm here. This guy just says, "Go play." He's not going to fail. In my opinion, he's going to find a way. When it all matches up across the board, we're either we're either going to all be right, or we're going to be all wrong. But when he wants to go, it's a wrap. Uh, this is my number one player. Really like what he is. Man, he had a hell of a senior ball. He was a baller. When you have that DNA match, I think that shows a consensus, and you usually feel pretty good about, you know, choosing that player. You know, one source said he's the best football player that he's ever been around. His biggest moments came in the biggest games and the biggest situations. I just don't know the best way to get through to this kid. I wish I did. One thing we don't want is everyone to see a guy the same way. You know, it's, it's like group thinking. It's discrepancy so far because we had uh, all six threes on him coming out of February. The, the player uh, means a lot, obviously, but the person means more. Players that not only want to be coached, but are willing to, to empty their tanks. Those type of things are discussed ad nauseum in our meeting. Any concerns at all on character? Zero for me. No, no. Football is everything to him. Guy plays with a consistent edge and chip on his shoulder. I think he's a character fit. This guy can tell you every man that has made the man that he is. The hair in the back of my neck stood up when I heard it. Because he's ridiculously good. Uh, I just think the pressure cooker's gonna be too much for this guy here. Okay. All right. It's some it's some it's, it's to you. The coaching staff describes what they want. This guy is it. When it's time for him to rise, it's time for him to rise. This is a red star candidate for me. The guy that everyone loves, got multiple favorite player on the team comments. This is a top level 6 1 football player who, whose STI shows up in every game. I thought it was pretty obvious he was the best guy there. It's, it's a lot that goes into it, but it's very rewarding. The excitement that you have because of the work that you put in that started really in the spring when you start doing your top 50 players and putting your schedule together. You know, it's a collaborative effort, and I think Joe D does an excellent job of, uh, you know, coming to a consensus, and we feel really, really good going into this draft. Um, how about this guy, Wilbur McDonald? I had McDonald. I had McDonald. I had uh, Will, this guy, very nice. That's a tough crowd, I'd say, too. Will first, Wilbur, got it. It's a great game. In 2007 draft, the Jets electrified Radio City Music Hall, trading up to select cornerback Darrell Rivas. Where they at right now, they gotta be going after their defensive back. With the 14th pick in the 2007 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Darrell Rivas. The Pittsburgh native didn't take long to become the game's best, locking down the top receivers in the NFL. A four-time first-team All-Pro, Darrell Rivas became known as Rivas Island on the road to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Dreams are fulfilled every offseason for college standouts making it to the NFL, but sometimes you don't need to hold the jersey to make a wish come true. Good. Good. I'm Mackenzie with the Jets. Welcome. We're so excited you guys are here. Of course. We can head on in whenever you guys are ready. Thank you. Of course. Meet 13-year-old Kyle Stickles, a Make-A-Wish recipient whose love for the green and white runs deep in his heart. Kyle's wish is to walk on stage and announce his favorite team's first round draft pick. Diagnosed with osteosarcoma, a rare bone cancer in his leg, Kyle regained his ability to walk after a year of treatment in 2021. 
Kyle's dream will soon come true. But first, he gets a special sneak peek behind the curtain in Florham Park. Are you announcing our pick? Yeah. You ready for it? Yeah. Yeah? Well, good luck, man. <laughs> Thanks. Represent us. Yeah. All right. How long have you been a Jets fan for? Uh, probably since the day I was born, I'd say. Christina! He's, he's making our pick. Nice so nice to meet you. Are you yeah. so excited? Yeah. Awesome. We're excited to have you. Mm -hmm. That's that's a big deal. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. exciting. I'm jealous. <laughs> hey, Kyle. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Rex, our assistant GM. How you doing, uh, Kyle? Good to good. meet you, man. Awesome. Good to see you. Let's go. The rest of the crew. Hi. How you Jamie doing? is mom. Hey, Jamie. How <laughs> nice. you doing? Good. Nice to meet you. Hey, Todd. Nice what are you doing? Good to see you. Kira. Hey, Kira. Good, nice good to see you guys. Yeah. What's up? Enjoying it? First time here? Nice, man. Sweet. You want to come check out the draft room? Can I get a tour <laughs> yeah. of everything? Come on. They're all our offices up here. So everybody up here is like player personnel, mm -hmm. like all the scouts and Joe. Joe's our GM. This is his office here. He's got the best suite, got the best view. And then it's my office here. And then all these guys down here. Chad's our director of player personnel. Greg Nejma is our director of pro. Uh, so you guys good. All good. Okay. Um, here's a, it's our pro personnel room right here. Some of the scouts are here. Uh, and then all these other guys, these are like football administration. These guys do like the salary cap and negotiate contracts and mm -hmm. do all that aspect. But this is the draft room right here, man. This is where it all goes down. So this is Phil Savage. He's our senior personnel executive. Hello. Does a lot of college pro everything. Here, come on back here. This is this is where it, so Coach Sala will be here. Mm -hmm. Joe Douglas will be right here. Mr. Johnson, Woody will be there. Christopher, and then Joe's here. I'm here, and then Chad is our director of player personnel. So you must see, sit in the seat, and see what it feels like. Make the pick. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, so Joe Joe will be sitting here. I'll be sitting here, so we've got new technology for us now. We can just touch the iPad for the player, whatever player we want, and then it dials it for us. Makes life a lot easier than having a call, and then we get them on the phone, and everybody else gets to pick up and talk and start talking about welcome to the Jets. Yeah. So it's a pretty cool moment when it happens. Kyle, hey, Kyle. Hi. How are you? I'm Joe. Nice Good. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, man, we're fired up to have you yeah. make our first pick. Mm-hmm. I know Rex gave you a tour of the, the yeah. draft room, and I know you're going to be at the pre-draft press conference, right? Mm -hmm. You want to come up on stage and, yeah. and maybe answer a question for us? Mm -hmm. kick, us kick, off, <laughs> kick off the uh, pre-draft uh, presser? Yeah. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Excited to have you here. Yeah. Yeah. Excited with the moves yesterday? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Walking within the walls of one Jets drive, you never know who you might bump into. Cool in here, is it? Yeah. What's up? Doing good? <laughs> yeah. Garrett said, don't pick a wide receiver. He <laughs> ah, I want his no. touches to go down. No, see, I said no such thing now. How are you, man? Good. Good to meet you, brother. Glad to have you here. Yeah. Man. You're going to make, make the pick on Thursday, right? Yeah. So, so how old are you, man? Uh, 13. 13? Mm -hmm. Okay. Big dog. Yeah. <laughs> you bigger than me at 13, I'll show you that. <laughs> My God. How are y'all? Yeah, of course. <laughs> you a Jets fan? Yeah. Since, like, forever? Yeah. That's what's up, man. So I know you're loyal to that. Mm -hmm. But this year, we're going to have some stuff to root for. You're yeah. going to be a happy fan. You're mm -hmm. not going to have to... <laughs> deal with, uh, I don't know, when you go to school, people are probably like, you're a Jets fan, you can't say nothing. <laughs> That's, that ends this year, mm -hmm. all right? We're going to win for you. Yeah. My dog. Yeah. You know it, we're going to win for you. Y'all got, got football? Let's, let's come on, let's play catch for a second. That's tough. Nerf making real leather balls, huh? <laughs> there it is. Yeah, Kyle. I got a gun. Hey, you got a good arm, my guy. Oh, yeah. All right, Kyle. Game winner right here. Game winner. It's a hut. Give me that. 
<laughs> oh, you got good hands, good arm. Hold on, Kyle. <laughs> I think you ready, bro. Yeah. I think you ready. You might, you might call your own name on Thursday. <laughs> All right, my guy. Kyle seemed to pass the test among personnel and players, but can he handle the media? Nice to see you again. How are you? Good. What do you think the Jets should pick on that first round? <laughs> Who do you think should be? A, should it be an offensive tackle? Should it be? What do you think? I mean, we definitely don't need a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Have they, have they... Safe travels out to mm -hmm. Kansas City. Yeah. It's a big job. Yeah. We need you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sure. everything. Every step taken during the 2023 offseason is with one goal in mind, building the Jets into a championship contender. Over the next three days, the opportunity is there to fortify the roster. Draft day has finally arrived. Well, I think in a lot of cases, it's a culmination of, you know, 10 or 11 months worth of work. And, you know, it's, it's not something where, you know, during the season, well, if you have a bad game or bad series or bad play, you can go back and fix it and be back out on the field the next week. We get one shot a year to do this. Well, we make sure before the draft that we're, we're fully prepared. And I think Joe D does a great job of us coming to a consensus and really feeling comfortable with 15 players that we really like, the guys that are going to, you know, come in here and help us going forward. And so there's just a lot that goes into it. Um, you know, for the draft, you know, obviously, you know, you expect the unexpected. You know, it's again sort of a culmination of the end of the year. Uh, there's an excitement and anticipation that, okay, we're going to be able to add somebody that we really like uh, to this football team, and hopefully they'll be able to get on the field and help us this year. You know, there are a lot of things that, that are going to happen that, that you didn't see coming, obviously trades and players being taken. But, you know, we feel extremely comfortable, I think, because we've come to that consensus. So we, we feel extremely confident that, that we're going to get a good player that's going to come in and help us immediately. All right, Kansas City, it's time to get the show started. The 2023 NFL Draft is now officially open. As the clock winds in round one, the Jets weigh their options as their first selection approaches. And predicting how the board will break is part of the game. Green Bay has submitted a six. New England is now on the clock. That's a good one. New England has traded six. Pittsburgh is now on the clock. Pittsburgh, Crawford Jones. Goes under five. Pittsburgh has submitted a six. The New York Jets are now on the clock. On the clock at pick 15, the Jets lock in on adding another dynamic edge rusher to a loaded defensive line. Yeah, Will McDonald's a guy that I'm just really excited about because that was one of my assigned schools uh, throughout the year. And so when I went there in the fall, 
you see this big, long, you know, slender frame player that was so athletic. Yeah, the big thing with Will is his, his athletic ability and his ability to bend in a natural pass rusher. When he was at Iowa State, he was used as a four-eyed, more of an interior rusher at times, which made it more challenging. But, but when he was outside and was able to rush one-on-one, -on -one, he was a consistent winner, and we thought he was one of the best pass rushers in, in the draft. He's got really long arms. He's really rangy. He's got a tremendous wingspan. He, uh, he's been really productive throughout his entire career. I mean, he set the uh, the Big 12 record in sacks with 34. He's, uh, you know, he's got, you know, a lot of forced fumbles, uh, game-changing plays. Well, I know last year in 2021, I happened to be at the Texas-Iowa State game, and, and Will had a terrific game that night. And so there was some talk that he was going to enter the draft a year ago. So uh, several of us wrote reports on him a year ago. We've talked about this player really for almost two a draft cycle, so we're very familiar with him. But we saw a guy that was explosive off the edge, that could bend. He had the play strength, he had the tenacity. There were times when they bumped him down to a four eye, and he played strong inside. He, he's a guy that loves the game, he loves to compete, and we're just extremely excited for him. I think that we all appreciate the program at Iowa State. Matt Campbell's done a terrific job there. Uh, you, you have a good idea of the kind of player that you're going to get. They work there, uh, they're coached there, they, they, they have been developed there. And so with Will, you combine those factors with his natural ability. I mean, this is, this is a tremendous athlete. Uh, I think that in this system where he's gonna be playing really as a true wide nine off the edge, that's going to unlock even more potential that he has. Call, call. Call, okay. Will. You good, boss? Will, McDonald. You have this How you doing? What's up, boss? It's Rex with the Jets. What? This is Rex with the Jets. You ready to roll? I am. I've been ready. I love it, man. We're going to take you right here. Get ready to rush. It's cool. It's cool, man. I mean, not only for us because the excitement builds, but when you get on the phone, when I make the call to to Will, uh, for instance, it, at first he didn't didn't really hear me, so I was like, Will, Will McDonald, and just to make sure. And he he's like, Yeah, yeah, Coach, let's go. And so then, but it, it's cool because you know this guy's been working his whole life to get to this moment. <laughs> Oh, Will, what's up, man? Joe Douglas with the Jets. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? Uh, fired up, man. Fired up to add another dog, another pass rusher. Man, excited, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the family. Appreciate it, man. Everybody get yeah, ready. Yeah, man. I'm going to pass you over to Coach Sala now. Where is he? You ready? Let's get him. All right. All right let's what? get it. A game uh, wrecker. What's uh, up, Will? Let's go, boss. How you doing? Hey, man. We're excited. You you fit a skill set, man. There's going to be a lot of things. Yep, you come into yep. a really good defensive line room. We love to All get right. after it. We'll get you out of that four eye and get you in that wide nine and get you firing off the ball and getting after a quarterback. Yeah, for sure. It's time uh, to get right. I appreciate you. Super coach. excited for you, bro. Will, what's up, my dog? What's up, coach? How you doing? You ready to rock, man? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready, man. I've been ready. You know, I'm just All enjoying right. my time, man. I appreciate the honor. Dude, I can't tell you how fired up we are for you to be here, man. Enjoy this front, yeah. attack front, man. This attack front, this thing was made for you, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. What's that, three? What's that, three? Hey, Breeze! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, yeah, we about to get right, bro. I'm telling you, bro. Yeah, we about to get right. Hey. Oh, God, bro. Wait, it's three us it's, it's three of us on there now? Hey. Hey, we about to get the business, bro. We about to get hey, hey, look at the camera, bro. Look at that. Hey. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The NFL is proud to be part of a global community that supports the life-changing wishes 
that make a wish grants. With World Wish Day only a couple days away, I'm joined by Kyle Stickles, a make a wish kid who battled and overcame bone cancer. Kyle's wish is to announce the first round pick of his favorite team, the New York Jets. I'd like all of you to join me in cheering on Kyle as his wish comes true. The floor is yours, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goodell. I'd also like to thank the NFL, the New York Jets, and the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Northeastern New York for giving me this opportunity tonight. With the 15th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the New York J-E-T-S! In 1998, the Jets sent shockwaves through the NFL, signing restricted free agent Curtis Martin to a long-term contract. In his first season in the green and white, Martin rushed his way to the Pro Bowl and led the Jets to an AFC East division title. Number 28 ran for over 1,000 yards in seven different seasons and earned a rushing title in 2004 on his way to the Hall of Fame. With day two of the draft set to begin, the team welcomes their newest addition to Florham Park. The man the myth the legend. That's you, bro. You already here. Ooh, we about to get busy. I'll miss you more, bro. Man, Brees was always doing stuff. You know, I, I, I always say, you know, we always just like have fun, you know, just chill out, uh, have fun with the boys. And, you know, we was just like, just talking about life and like about the draft. And I was like, hey, bro, if I come to the Jets, like that'd be crazy. He was like, I don't know, but you know, like anything could happen at the draft party. You know, he was, he was like, like, as they was calling me, he was on the phone with Coach Campbell. And I was like, oh, Breeze, I'm about to be with you, bro. Like, hey, we about to get lit. Hey, Will, like, hey, you ready to come to Jets? I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a feeling. I'm just glad to get this opportunity to you know, uh, just be a part of it. You know, I got Brees here, you know, Allen. You know, just like, just being a part of this team, you know, just like uh, changing everything. I'm just taking it all in, you know, it's, it's a blessing. I'm, I'm just glad I'm able to be a part of it. you started playing football, what was it like, you know, this is awesome, like, what made you love it? I mean, it just, it gave me an opportunity, you know, at life, you know, I was able uh, to change uh, my path, you know, from from uh, from going to the Army and then, you know, being the number one draft pick. My sophomore year, I was going through a lot of things. You know, my brother had ended up passing that year, and, like, I think, you know, like, just going through that point, I just, like, had to realize the sacrifices that I had to make in order for me to not go back home empty-handed, you know, to my family. I wasn't expecting myself to be here, you know, six, seven years from now. You know, I'm, I'm just able to like change the course of my family. 
I'm excited for all the new things to come. You know, the way I was used at Iowa State, you know, I feel like I can be using um, any type of like versatile way. Uh, whether I'm on the edge or, you know, playing inside, you know, I feel like I can do anything that, that they ask me. You're all a six four. Six four. Six four. Six four. Six four. Six four. Hey, this feel great. Astonishing, man. We about to get to work. As they enter the second round of the NFL draft, the Jets are looking to add reinforcements in the trenches with a big target in their sights. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a long wait until pick 43. It's a wait and see, uh, kind of like our situation at 15, just waiting to see the way the, the board unfolded. And uh, you know, that was our hope, that, that Joe was going to be there and Joe was going to make his way down to us at 43. And so, the, you know, the closer it gets, the, the more anxious you get in, in terms of, man, we've got our guy, we've got our guy, he's making his way to us. The Pittsburgh Steelers select Joey Porter Jr. Will Levis, Sam Laporta, Michael Mayer, Steve Avila, Matthew Bergeron, Jonathan Mingo, Isaiah Foskey, BJ. O Joe being a former offensive lineman, he has no problem taking a lineman at any point. And uh, he understands and we understand as a group the value of both sides of the ball that it starts up front, offensively and defensively. You know, we, in, on offense, you have to protect and you have to have playmakers. On defense, you have to have guys who can rush and guys who can cover. I mean, I know it's, it sounds really basic and simple, but those are the true cores of what we're going to do on, on offense and defense. And uh, we're going to continue to build the, the team in that order. John, you're in Wisconsin, right? No, you're in You're good, good. I mean, smart. They call the call. You make all the lot of lines. Next guy is Joe Tilton, Wisconsin. Tipman is a good athlete. He moves well. He's laterally quick. He's fast in the second level. He has a personality where I think his teammates will really like him in the locker room. He's kind of, you know, I know he has a mullet, but like he's just kind of got a way about him that I think's pretty cool. Center projection has really only been a center for them. Um, I thought he's a big, tough kid with instincts. I think he can run for the outside zone scheme. Um, got almost 33 inch arms. He's got expressive, impressive speed getting out to space. He's explosive out of his stance. Um, my thing, I, I really like the instincts. He's an NFL center. He looks like he can run the show. He locates well in the move. He sees things, comes off. Again, here's a young man that has a high level of passion for the game. Very coachable, extremely smart, you know. He's big, he's long, and his range, his ability uh, to, to play on this type of scheme, the zone scheme style run game, and his ability to climb to the second level. He's one of the best pullers I saw with all the linemen I did this year. Uh, he's quick to climb to the second level, solid use of angles, pass pro to quick first step, solid punch, lateral agility to the mirror, good FBI, keep his head on a swivel. He's good with help. Overall, I thought there was a lot to like. Joe Tittman's a guy who brings a lot of elite traits uh, to the table. He's unusually tall for a center, but he, he moves well for his height. He carries his height well. Uh, he has elite speed. We think he's a scheme fit. He, uh, he's, uh, he's a guy that's played a lot of football. He's from a great program that has uh, put out a lot of offensive linemen. Um, he's got the right pedigree. He's made of the right stuff. He's a great communicator, uh, very intelligent, and we feel like he was one of the better interior players in the draft. With Joe as a player, we, we see a big athletic center uh, who has movement, who has strength and ability to bend. With what we're going to do in our, in our run game and passing game, he provides great value, and he's a big man who's, who's got position versatility to play other spots on the offensive line as well. 
how did the uh, how the room have this guy and mock? I had this guy. I had Joe Cooper. Joe. Tiffany. I don't know if this is actually top, center, and bottom. <coughs> How about this guy and Michael Schmitz? I have this guy. Joe. Tip. Tip. Tipman. I have this guy as well. Tipman and Zay. Tipman. I have Tipman. I have Tipman. Tipman. How about Addison and Tipman? Tipman. Two. I have two. 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 Yo, it's Rex with the Jets. How's it going? Going great, man. We're going to take you right here. Bring Hell that yeah. sweet Wisconsin Excited. waterfall with you. Can't wait to Hell see yeah. that I'm mullet in New go, York. Sir. All right. Here's Joe <laughs> Douglas, our GM. Yo, what's up, man? How's it going? You fired up? Oh, I'm fired up, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, man. Can you hear me? Hey, like Rex said, up. we can't wait to get that sweet-ass mullet here and pull apart. <laughs> For any prospect, one call changes it all. Hey, uh, we're really excited about you, Ben. You're coming into a really good situation. A um, lot of excitement around here, especially with uh, all the additions we made on the offensive side of the ball. And you get to block for a pretty cool one. I'm sure you've been watching them for the last few years. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, the long road, every sacrifice. Uh, we've been looking forward to this all day. And even yesterday, we were talking about you because you know, you know who the quarterback is, right? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, your job is going to be helping him. Are you up for oh, it? Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. I know. You're the man to do it. You're the man to do it. Yeah. So we're so yeah. proud to have you. A dream realized. How's it going? Hey, we love these Wisconsin boys. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> hell yeah. Ready to get to work, sir. While every journey to the NFL is different, the goal is the same. It's time to answer the call. Hello? Carter. Yeah, how you doing? What's up, man? This is Thomas Woody with the New York Jets. Hey, how you doing today? Good, man. You ready to be a Jet? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. We're going to take you here, buddy. We're going to have you on the rock up here in, in New York. And you're a New York Jet. Coach me, how, how you doing? doing? You fired up? How you doing, Coach? Yes, sir. They don't make a lot of people like you, man. Big, strong, explosive, home run hitter. Love you. Excited to get you here. All that work you put in, yeah. bro. Heck yeah, man. Don't be getting soft on me now. Hell, all that talk you 